moving ahead next topic is congestion control we have been discussing about congestion from last video itself so in today's video lecture we are going to see what this congestion actually means its cause and different ways to handle the congestion in the network The main objective of congestion control is to avoid traffic congestion. So before understanding various congestion control techniques, we need to understand the data traffic. There are various parameters uh, that characterize data traffic. These are average data rate, peak data rate, maximum bus size, and effective bandwidth. Average data rate means the amount of data bits that is transmitted through the network over the period of time so this is calculated by using this formula that is the amount of data bits that the network received divided by total time peak data rate means the maximum amount of bits that the network received at any point in time so you can see here that from this time to this time the network has received the maximum amount of data bits this duration is called maximum bus size that is nothing but the duration of peak data rate now if the value of this peak data rate is uh, very high but for a very short duration that is even if the peak data rate is more than the capacity of the network and it is there for very short duration then this kind of situation network will be able to handle this that is um, if this happens then uh, Obviously, network will be discarding some of the packets, but those packets will be retransmitted by the sender. Now, these retransmitted packets, the network will be able to carry and uh, it will be able to deliver to the correct destination. But suppose if the duration of peak data rate is long, that is, the value of maximum brush size is high, then what will happen is the retransmitted packet will again increase the uh, data traffic in the network, which is uh, going to result into discarding of more packets. And uh, this will again uh, make the sender retransmit. Again, more packets will be discarded as uh, because the uh, network traffic will increase. So this will make the condition in the network worse. Okay. Now this effective bandwidth is the amount of bandwidth that the network needs to allocate. This will be calculated by using the average data rate, peak data rate and maximum brush size. These are the different types of traffic that the network uh, may experience. These are constant bit rate, variable bit rate and brush rate traffic. In constant bit rate, the uh, amount of traffic that the network will be experiencing okay that the amount of data bits that the network will receive will be same throughout the duration that is how much of data bits that the nodes will be sending to the network is expected by the network so this type of traffic uh, is most easiest traffic that the network can handle in this case the average data rate and peak uh, peak data rate is same the second type of traffic is variable bit rate, wherein the amount of data bits that the network is receiving is different in different point in time. This type of traffic is more difficult to handle in comparison to constant bit rate, but uh, the difference in the uh, amount of data bits is not much. You can see here, the even though the data rate is variable, but it is smooth. So we need not be reshaping this type of network, uh, this type of traffic. Now the third type of uh, traffic is brushed traffic. And this is the worst type of traffic that the network uh, may experience. Here, suddenly the uh, data rate in the network has increased to a very high value. Okay, and it is there in this peak data rate for very long duration. Again, it is becoming zero and after some time suddenly the network is experiencing a lot of uh, data rate data traffic so this type of network uh, 
in this type of network, we can see here that the average data rate and peak data rate is different. And uh, uh, this type of uh, traffic for a network to handle will be very difficult. So we need to reshape this type of traffic. Okay, We need to make this traffic uh, somewhat uh, equal to variable bit rate and constant bit rate. Now we will see in detail what this uh, congestion actually means. Congestion occurs in the network when the number of packets that is being transmitted by the nodes to the network is more than the number of packets that the network can handle. That is, number of packets being uh, sent to the network is called load and the number of packets that the network can uh, process is called capacity of the network. So that is, if load in the network is more than the capacity of the network, that is, number of packets that the network is receiving is more than uh, how much network can handle, we say that the congestion has occurred. So if there is congestion in the network, as I already said, the uh, network will start discarding the packets. So we need to uh, use some congestion control mechanism that is going to prevent the congestion or if the network suffer from the congestion, then it is going to uh, detect it and it is going to remove the congestion from the network. Congestion occurs in network because network has intermediate devices like router. This router maintains two queues, input queue and output queue, in each interface for each network. So you can see here, this router is connected to three network uh, using three interface. In each interface, it has two queue. One is input queue and the other one is output queue. Every incoming packet will be stored in, in input queue. The router will be taking one packet at a time from the input queue. It will be processing that packet. Processing a packet means uh, basically finding the destination address and uh, the destination network. So after processing the packet, the packet will be stored in the interface of that destination network. So let us say in this example, let us say this router is receiving a packet from this network. So the packet will be stored in input queue of this interface from where the router will be taking that packet, it will be processing. And after processing, let us say the router found out that the network is in this site, then the router will be storing that packet in the output queue of this interface. Now, in this uh, technique, what will happen is, if the speed with which the network is sending packet to the network is higher than the processing speed of the router, then the number of packets in the input queue will start increasing. And this is at, uh, at uh, after some point, the input queue will become full and every further incoming packet will be discarded by the router. Now, similarly, if the processing speed of the router is faster than uh, the speed with which the network uh, is taking out packet from the output queue and it is delivering to the destination, then what will happen is the number of packets in the output queue will start increasing as a result of which once this output queue becomes full, the packets, every process packet will be discarded by the router. Now, when, when the queue is becoming full, the remaining packets are getting discarded in the network and this situation is called congestion. That is the congestion occurs in two cases when the rate of packet arrival is higher than the packet processing rate, then input queue will become full and the packets will start getting discarded. Now the second case is when the packet processing rate is higher than the packet uh, departure rate from the output queue, then the output queue will become full and every further incoming packet will be discarded by the network. This type of situation is called congestion. Now, before understanding the different uh, ways to control the congestion, we will see how this congestion affects two very important parameters of network, that is delay and throughput. We, know, we have seen that uh, congestion occurs when the load in the network is higher than the capacity of the network. 
So when the number of packets transmitted to the network is more than uh, the number of packets that the network can handle, we say that congestion has occurred. And from that point, the network will start discard, discarding the packet. Okay. Now, if the load in the network is very less, then the uh, intermediate node of the network will take very less time to process and the network itself will take very less time to propagate that message and to deliver to the destination side, which means that its delay at that point will be minimum. Now, this delay will increase when the number of packets in the network increases, but when the load, that is the number of packets sent to the network is very close to the capacity of the network, you can see here the delay has increased exponentially. This is because when the number of packets is very large in the network, the router, that is the intermediate node, will have to, will take a lot of time to process those packets. Now, when the load becomes equals to capacity, then the delay is infinite. This is because when the uh, when the load becomes equals to cap, uh, capacity this is the congestion situation at this point the network will start discarding the packets so next we are going to see how congestion affects two very important parameter of network that is delay and throughput you can see here in the first uh, case, if the load in the network, that is the number of packets uh, sent to the network is minimum, then the delay is also minimum. This is because if there are less number of packets in the network, then the processing time by the router as well as propagation time by the network for that packet to reach the destination will also be minimum. So delay is minimum here. Now, when the number of uh, packets increases, that is when the load increases in the network, delay will also be increasing. But when this load reaches very close to capacity of the network, that is towards the congestion situation in the network, the delay will be increasing exponentially. It is because when there are large number of packets in the network, okay, then what will happen is the uh, processing time by the router will be very high as a result of which the amount of delay that the packet will be experiencing will be very high. Now, when this load reaches very close to capacity, capacity of the network, then the delay is infinite. This is because the network has started discarding the packet as a result of which there is retransmission of those discarded packet by the sender, this retransmission will again increase the number of packets in the network. Again, the discarding will occur, again the retransmission, and, and hence the packet may never reach the destination, or it may reach the destination after very large amount of time. So we can see here that once the network becomes congested, the delay is infinite and the uh, probability of a packet to reach its destination is very less. Next, we will see how congestion affects throughput in the network. So throughput means the number of packets being transmitted from a point per unit time. Okay? So you can see here, when we will be increasing the number of packets in the network, that is load, then throughput will also increase. But it will increase up to a point that is when uh, like you can see here that load as the load increases throughput is also increasing now the expectation is the once the uh, network reaches uh, its saturation point that is when the amount of packets sent to the network uh, becomes equals to the capacity of the network uh, the expectation is throughput to remain constant but actually this will not happen. That is when the network becomes congested because, the, uh, because of the retransmission policy. That is when the router will be discarding the packet, sender will be retransmitting. So this retransmitting will again going to increase the load further as a result of which the throughput, instead of uh, being constant there, it will start decreasing.
because the packet will be dropped again it will be retransmitted again it will be dropped and so on so there will be few number of packets that will be propagated through the network and it will be that will be delivered to the destination this congestion control mechanism either prevents congestion before it happens or remove congestion after it has happened so broadly congestion control mechanisms are categorized into two category one is open loop congestion control technique which tries to prevent congestion that is not uh, by letting the network go into congestion mode and the second one is closed loop congestion control mechanisms which try to uh, detect congestion once it occurs in the network and remove that congestion by using several congestion control mechanisms so there are various open loop congestion control techniques and there are various closed loop congestion control techniques in open loop there are retransmission policy window policy acknowledgement policy discarding policy and admission policy in closed loop there are back pressure choke packet implicit signaling and explicit signaling so as i already said open loop congestion control techniques tries to prevent congestion in the network so this will be done either by source node or by the destination node remember that network will not be executing any mechanism to prevent the congestion so this will be done either by source or by the destination so uh, the first uh, type of open loop congestion control technique is retransmission policy so we have been discussing that once a packet is dropped by the network the sender which is waiting to receive the acknowledgement it may not receive the acknowledgement and hence it will be retransmitting the packet now what may happen is because of retransmission the number of packets in the network will also increase that is the load will also increase and the congestion in the network becomes worse so instead of uh, using the simple retransmission technique we need to use some good retransmission policy wherein uh, one example is instead of retransmitting as soon as the timer expires let the sender wait for some duration and then retransmit so that till that duration the network may recover from the congestion mode the second one is window policy uh, this will be executed by the sender so sender can use two types of window policy one is go back and uh, transmission policy the second one is selective request transmission policy so if the sender is using go back n then when the timer expires for one packet all the packets which is there in that window will be transmitted now this may uh, the there can be a situation in the network wherein the receiver has already received some of the packets and not the first one so this is going to increase the number of packets in the network so instead of that if the sender uses selective uh, request uh, transmission policy wherein only those packets will be retransmitted whose uh, acknowledgement uh, the sender is not receiving from the uh, receiver okay now the next one is acknowledgement policy here uh, instead of a uh, receiver acknowledging every packet that it is receiving uh, we can uh, have the uh, cumulative acknowledgement uh, solution that is instead of sending acknowledgement for each packet receiver can send uh, one acknowledgement for set of packets so acknowledgement is also a packet so if we reduce the number of acknowledgement packet in the network congestion will also be reduced the next one is discarding policy when the queue in the router becomes full router will start discarding the packet so instead of router discarding every incoming packet let the router decide which packet in the queue needs to be discarded that means which packet will not have much effect in the, in the entire information propagation like for example uh, if sender is transmitting some audio and if there are some packets in that audio uh, which does not have much uh, uh, information like which is silent which is all zero the information is all zero that type of packet if router discards then the quality of audio will not be affected much okay which means that discarding policy means 
the whenever the nodes are going to discard the packet it should discard only those packet which is not going to have any significant uh, weightage in the entire information and that is not going to affect the integrity of the entire message the next policy is admission policy this is used whenever uh, we are using connection oriented protocol like tcp so before sending the actual data a node will establish connection then only they will start transmitting the data so that connection uh, let us say client want to establish connection with the server okay now if the network is congested server can deny the connection request itself so when the connection request is denied there will not be any data transmission and hence the congestion can be controlled the next type of congestion control policy is closed loop wherein after congestion occurs in the network it will be identified and uh, the congestion will be uh, removed by using various mechanisms so those mechanism as i already said can be back pressure choke packet implicit signaling or explicit signaling in case of back pressure you can see here let us say here is the source and here is the destination let us say node number 3 detected congestion that is its buffer is full so it is dropping some packet so these are the intermediate nodes so when this uh, node will be dropping the packet, it will be informing its immediate uh, uh, upstream node, that is from where it received that packet. It will be informing that upstream node about the congestion. That is node two will get to know that uh, there is a congestion in this line. So it will be dropping the incoming packet which it will be receiving from this link and then again it will be informing this node one that there is a congestion so this will also stop receiving the packet from this line and ultimately this will be informed to the source so back pressure means the node which detected the congestion in the network is informing source source okay so that, that information is going in the backward direction so node three is informing node two then node 2 is informing node 1 and finally node 1 is informing the source node. The next type of uh, policy is chalk packet wherein when a node detects that the congestion has occurred, okay, it will be informing directly to the source by using a packet called chalk packet. This is similar to ICMP coins message if you can remember that when the congestion is detected by a node, it will be creating a ICMP message and directly that will be informing source to quench, that is to slow down. Now the difference between choke packet and back, back pressure is, in the back pressure, the packet is going through the line from where it had traveled previously. Okay? Limitation of this back pressure is, the every node will have to know from which upstream node it received the packet okay so this it can it is only possible if there is a virtual circuit that has been created but if it is a datagram communication then back pressure cannot be used for that we can use choke packet wherein directly the node will be informing the actual source the next one is implicit signaling in case of implicit signaling instead of the So in case of implicit signaling, uh, the receiver can delay the acknowledgement. So when sender will be uh, waiting to receive the acknowledgement to send the next packet, if it receives acknowledgement lately, then it will uh, implicitly going to uh, make delay in the transmission of the next successive packets. In case of explicit signaling, the node which has experienced the congestion will be informing sender or the destination about the congestion now this is different from that of choke packet in case of choke packet a separate packet uh, or node will be creating to inform the source about the congestion but in case of explicit signaling the information will be sent in the data packet itself that is uh, suppose there is a data packet which is traveling from source to destination and there is a chance of congestion uh, in the network 
then whichever node detects the possibility of congestion will be uh, putting some kind of uh, signal in that data packet which is moving towards the destination. So once the destination receives a data packet which uh, contains the signal about the congestion, it may delay the acknowledgement, okay, which is again going to delay the data transmission by the sender. Now this, this uh, can also happen in the opposite direction. Like when a uh, receiver is sending data packet to the sender, that node which has detected the congestion can insert some kind of uh, signal in the data packet which is moving towards the source node. So source after getting a signal that uh, there is possibility of congestion in the network, it can slow down. So this explicit signaling is of two types. One is the backward explicit signaling, the other one is forward explicit signaling. So forward means the signal in the data packet is going from source to destination, okay, towards the destination. Backward means the data packet which is moving from destination to the source, that data packet contains a signal about the congestion. 